So there's, a, there's great promise if we use technology well, but more importantly is to take the very best practices, take the great teachers and the great environments for teaching that have been created and learn what's there and spread that out uh, to the rest of the system. Gone are the days of holding a conversation in person. Gone are the days of taking books out from the library. Gone are the days of tedious research. As we switch from print to digital media, landlines to cell phones, and desktops to laptops, the teens of today are becoming more reliant on new technology and advancements. Some say that technology is hurting our early education, while others argue we are benefiting from it. Is there a disconnect in interpersonal communication, or does new technology allow students to stay connected with one another and work more efficiently? You can get online, you know, talk to other people about what you agree with, what you're confused about. You can uh, hire a tutor who will generally come from India for about $28 an hour, straighten you out on any of your uh, scientific misunderstandings. So the learning empowerment at one level is showing the potential that every student will be able to go up and assess their skills. Whether students are using the internet to take extra courses or using it to check their grades, teens rely on new technology to complete assignments and stay connected. Teens don't read the paper anymore because they're too busy on social networking sites and watching TV. Although few and far between, some teens get their news updates from local networks on TV or even from Google or Yahoo. According to the Pew Charitable Trust, over 90% of teens use a desktop or laptop and almost 75% of teens use social networks. According to the Pew Internet Research Company in 2006, college students overwhelmingly reported that their social life on campus has been affected by the internet. The internet serves two purposes for students, using the internet to stay in contact with professors and working on group projects, and secondly, to be in sync with family members and friends. And although texting has the benefit of keeping teens connected, according to a Washington Post article, physicians and psychologists are concerned that the excessive texting may lead to anxiety, distraction in school, falling grades, repetitive stress, injury, and sleep deprivation. Butler University psychologist Carol Hagan says students don't realize how much texting interferes with basic interactions with other people. And also that it doesn't give people time to incubate thought or relationships. Dr. Hagens knows some people are afraid to turn the phone off for fear of missing a message. And then if I have the cell phone on and I'm sitting there and the text message comes, I can't not look at it. That sounds to me a lot like an OCD kind of issue. Half of teens send 50 or more text messages a day or 1,500 text messages a month. And one in three send more than 100 texts a day or more than 3,000 texts a month. Ultimately, the current generations of teens will be more prepared to find and share information on a global scale than any generation before them. In this time of sound bites and instantaneous information, the ability to communicate succinctly and directly will be key to the success of this age group. The challenge we must consider and be aware of is the need to continue to maintain in-person contact and interpersonal social skills, along with utilizing technological advances to the best advantage. It is clear that technology has had a significant impact, positive and negative, on the current generation of teens.